All right, lads, welcome back to me podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy. Mick Thomas here. How are you? Thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing, sharing, and coming on back. Available wherever you get your podcast. Head over to YouTube. You get to see my ugly mug. Once in a while, you get to see the dog pop up during the episode. The dog actually do want to beat him. Uh, I know that's not a political thing to correct. And of course, I'm joking because it's my dog, but... Quiet all day long, quiet as a church mouse. But the second, you know, I sat here for five minutes waiting to record this because he, he wouldn't shut up chewing. Like a disgust. Do you ever hang out with a friend who's a disgusting pig when they try to eat? Just munching loud with their mouth open. That's what this fucker's doing. So I had to wait, had to sit back, wait for him to be done. I will guarantee you before the episode's over, he'll be up barking out the window at nothing. But anyway... Also, check out my other podcast with me buddy, Corey Brooks, called The Man's Idea Show. Available wherever you get your podcasts from. Same place, all right? Great show, funny show. It's nice to hang out with Corey and just do a bit of the lifting. Live dates, some live, live dates. Uh, next month, I'm going to be in Pittsburgh at the Improv. It's, I think, September 8th at the uh, improv there i am working on utah i'll be there in either the end of october or early november i gotta get back to you with that one november 24 20 no, sorry 25 26 i am headlining madcap comedy club in new Smyrna beach florida where i will be recording an hour special come on down for the tape and we would love to have you and this saturday night swing on by the comic strip and that's where you'll catch old mickey thomas so yeah thanks check me out live it's a good time it really is i just how was your weekend by the way everybody tell me how it was tell me in the comments wherever we're watching wherever you're getting this from but um i am back from where was i fucking weird trip i was in minnesota this week And then, of course, flying back, there was a mix-up of Southwest, and I ended up flying from Minnesota to Chicago, from Chicago to Nashville. Nashville, back to Long Island, still home by 2 o'clock in the afternoon. But I thought um, I I, I thought it was going to be sex trafficked. I know, I know. It's it's a tough thing out there, sex trafficking. it's It's no joke, but... I thought it was going to be sex trafficked, and I'll tell you what happened. I was down doing the comedy festival, the Minnesota Irish Comedy Festival. And at this stage, as as much fun as I had, the shows were just really great. The crowds were great. But hanging around the festival, you know, there's only so much Irish you can take. Do you know what I mean? If you're not Irish and you're thinking, like, even listening to me for a bit, that's enough Irish. Imagine just this in a field full of more of these... Just people wearing kilts. And I'm hanging out with my buddies, also Irish comics. Give them a check out. Give them a follow. Dave Finnerty and Sean. Uh, sorry, Jesus Christ, that's terrible. Sorry, lads. Dave Nihill, Sean Finnerty. Uh, I just had Sean on my brain there. Uh, we did the we did the tour, and uh, we're not done yet. A lot more dates to be added, so keep an eye out that. We are going to be looking at doing a U.S. tour um maybe the end of this year starting in 2023 we're working on it we're working on it, trying to get the things together but um agents and all that stuff you know what i mean the boring things the business aspect of the business but um so i'm with the lads and we're doing our shows but like there's only so much irish you can take you know and you're and you're hanging out with 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 some of like your favorite irish bands you know what I mean? And and that's what I was saying to Sean. I was like, I could never do a normal concert again after being, expo- being exposed to the treatment we got, the VIP treatment. You're hanging back in a green, in a big green room, a big tent with your favorite singer. You know what I mean? You know how cool that is? You're sitting there shooting the shit and everyone, you're, you're making them die laugh. You're making fun of the bagpipe player who's warming up next to you. That's the dog. It's not me. Um, there he goes. There he goes. And... Um, so, you know, he's out there and, and you know, you, you get to see Gaelic Storm. One of my favorite bands. They're on in the car all the time. And they're like good Irish music because they're not that shitty, typical fucking Irish. When you go to these festivals, right, and you go to the smaller tents, it's like how many times can I hear the fields of Atten Rye? How many times do I need to hear Oh Danny Boy? Do you know, I remember when I went back to Ireland for my dad's funeral two years back now. And we were carrying the coffin out the church at the end of the funeral. There was me up front. You know, you do the arm thing here. And there's me up front 
my brother behind me, my other brother, and then my uncle behind that brother. And uh, as we're carrying the coffin out of the church, you know, uh, and I was very uh, expressionless there through that whole ordeal because I was there for my family and I held it all together. Um, but when I was carrying out the coffin, I guess my uncle Jar, who's a great singer, by the way, great singer, kind man, and he gets up on the altar and I didn't know, and nobody told me he, this was going to happen. And as we're walking down, I hear a guitar strum and then all I hear is, oh, Danny boy. And I went, oh, for fuck's sake. And everyone's like, Mickey, okay. Like they thought I was heartbroken. I was like, if I fucking hear this song again, I'm seeing this walking down the aisle, carrying me dead down my shoulder. If I have to fucking hear this song again. You know, there's only so many times you can hear, oh, Danny boy, or the fields of Atten Rye, or the wild rover. That's another one. You know, and you get the bands like Gaelic Storm up there, and there's fucking a sea of thousands of people. And there's always a cunt in the middle just shouting out, Play the Wild Rover! You know what I mean? And the lads are writing original fucking music and art. I remember when I worked on, like, I worked with uh, Celtic Thunder, which sounds like an Irish strip group. But they're also an Irish band. And it was my first exposure to the Irish scene in America. And I, I, ho- I went on a cruise with them. And I did two cruises with them. The first cruise, I did two stand-up shows. One clean, one adult. And they asked me back the next year. And I go, look, Sharon Brown. Sharon Brown is a producer. And I go, look, can you let me do something else as well as comedy? Let me host game shows. Because they had game shows on there. Let me host them. Let me interview people. And she was like, yeah, we don't. You know, we've already paid, we're paying you enough for the stand up. I I do it for free. I'll fucking do it for free. Like, just let I I can't just do stand up and sit in my room all night. So she goes, I right, would you like to host the karaoke. I'd love to host the karaoke. I'm lying. Fucking hate karaoke, but I go down anyway. And here's how I know Irish music is just depressing, right? It's all depressing. So I'm up there and I'm on stage and the fucking was like 600 people in this cabaret room. 600 people of diehard karaoke enthusiasts. Now, karaoke people to me are right up there with the worst people with terrorists, Star Wars fans and karaoke fans. I go in that order and karaoke fans close first and second place, by the way, with terrorists and Star Wars fans. But they have karaoke fans are like they, there's people who can sing and they go to karaoke night to make fun of everybody else or then there's just the drunk people the real the drunkies who go up and sing barbie girl uh you know but there's always that one guy who missed his opportunity and he wants to sing sinatra and it's the one song he sings and you're like jesus Christ, we get it you can carry a tune mate so anyway so i'm 600 so so many people enter the karaoke night that we just had to put names in the fishbowl pull out the name have the song ready for you. Off you go. Dog's asleep now. So anyway, I go up I go up on stage and I'm calling the people up. And, you know, it's going okay. It's just going all right. As you expect a karaoke night would. 600 people. Because when they get picked, they don't get picked. They kind of tap out. You know what I mean? They kind of tap out. And they're like, well, they're just waiting for their name to be called. And they don't really want to support the other singers. Kind of like an open mic in comedy. Uh, you know, they go... They don't support each other. They don't laugh at each other's jokes because they think it's a contest. But, um, so we go, I go, I'm up on stage and I go into the fishbowl and I pull out a name and I go, uh, ladies and gentlemen, from Cincinnati, uh, Kyle, everybody, give Kyle a round of applause. So the place like, <laughs> Kyle comes up on stage. Now, as soon as he got on stage, it was clear to everybody in the room that Kyle, Kyle had Down syndrome. Now, everybody felt very uncomfortable, much like I'm sure you are right now listening to this. But I said, all right, Kyle, mate, what are you going to sing for us? And he said, I'm going to sing Jesse's. Wouldn't it be funny if I just did an impression of a Down syndrome person? I wonder when I get cancelled. <laughs> so I go, uh, I go, what are you going to sing? I'm going to sing Jesse's Girl. I go, Jai, great song. Kyle from Cincinnati singing Jesse's Girl. Take it away. And I left in the audience to this. Music started. He's got a girl. And he started to sing, man, right? And let me tell you. He was fucking phenomenal. He hit every single note, every word, every key, right to the point where everyone in the audience was like, yeah, this is, all right, Jesse's girl. All right, the uncomfortableness was starting to leave everybody. Everybody was having a great time. was like, yeah, fucking Jesse's girl. The people who work on the ship were walking through the room like, can I go to the capacity, Jesse's girl, right? Everybody was fucking, 
the, the ship was fucking swaying. The fucking crack was going. The loudness of everybody. After he, he finishes, thunderous applause. Yeah, Kyle, Cincinnati, Jesse's go. Give it go, Kyle. Wow, couldn't get enough. Of, yeah, Kyle. Who's next? John from Boston. John. Wow, John. What are you going to sing? Oh, the famine killed me, father. Like for fuck's sake. You know, there's only so much of it you can listen to. That's all Irish songs are, man. You know? I mean, we have our songs are like that, by the way, because we weren't allowed to document a lot of our history. That's true. The English wouldn't let us document our history. So we would sing them. We would sing our history so we would remember them and pass them on, which is a kind of a clever way. And the English would just walk into a room. You know, oh, it's on chat. You're not know, writing down anything there, are you? What you're writing down here, I governor. You're like, no, we're not writing down anything. We're just singing songs. Like, oh, go on, carry on, sing your fucking song. You know, oh, the queen is a cunt, the king is a cunt, and everyone's a fucking cunt, right? So, <laughs> history, history. And, um, yeah, so enough of it. Couldn't take it, lads. Could not take any more of it. So, I'm in Minnesota. And um, great. I'm in the town, by the way. I'm in the hotel staying with the, um, you know, the band Lumineers. I didn't. Someone just told me the Lumineers are staying in the hotel. I was like, all right. And and that's what you're probably doing right now. Oh, all right, Lumineers. You know that song? The, the only song to have is Hey Ho. I don't know the words. Hey. Ho. Hey. That, I don't know the words. I can't sing. That's that band. So I get in the elevator, and of course, there's two of them. You can tell the fucking, they're just hips. They're hipsters, man. Look at, I, I don't know, man, but Minnesota is full. Like, we were a mile away from when that George Floyd thing happened. The, uh, the murder thing, right? And um, you would, I didn't know that. You know, I didn't know that's where we, I knew. I, I, when someone told me, I was like, fuck yeah, I forgot we're in Min- that happened in Minnesota, didn't it? And we're like a mile and a half away from it. And it, you wouldn't think it, because the way you kind of, the reputation it kind of has, like a mile and a half, is like, is that, is, that a, is that a ghetto town? Is that where it happened? Is it like, you know, because you expect, you don't expect that place to happen in, in these hipster areas. And that's where it was, you know? And, and so we're in the elevator anyway i'll get back to the minnesota part and then these two fucking hipsters get in beards and man buns and uh the, i go what floor do you want me to hit because like the gym was on second and not many people really go to the gym in the hotel but i always do to kind of get the aggression out before or have a wank to get the aggression out before i have to go on stage and stuff you know a few hours beforehand so i go to, I, they, they get in they're on the top floor i was on the second the floor below them i think and we're going down, going down the hill, going down the elevator. I go, all right, that's what floor you want. And they're like, uh, ground floor, please. I was like, all right, there you go, no problem. They go, oh, your accent, where are you from? What are you doing? You're not from here. I go, no, what are you doing in town? Here for the festival, blah blah. blah. And they're like, oh, what are you doing here? They're like, oh, we're the Lumineers. I'm the singer, and he's the drummer. And I and I knew then. I knew the band. I knew of them. And I didn't want to go really. So I just went, oh, you playing at the Irish festival? And they're like, no, we're playing at the stadium, literally across from the hotel. You could walk across. Um, you know, I thought I thought that was funny. That was a giggle, and um, so I'm sitting there with the loot, with you know, talking to the Lumineers just for a minute. All right, let's have a good gig. Like, yeah, you too, enjoy. And um, I got you know, but anyway, that was the Lumineers part of it. That was I, I hadn't, that fucking story was going nowhere. I don't know why I told you, but uh, so the town is full of like hipsters, man buns, man purses, and and I was just thinking, man, we're we are like. Isn't it amazing like certain states have, for lack of better words, like ma- I don't want to say real men because that's definitely insulting to other men, but, you know, because what is a real man as such? But you know what I'm trying to talk about, like just manly man, manly men. But when you go to Nashville, I flew into Nashville, and I'm in the airport for about 45 minutes before I had to fly to New York, and I was just cowboy hats and boots and buckles and like big... Musk. I saw one man there waiting to get on the same flight as me. And I tell you, I just wanted to go and ask him, how did you get your beard like that? It was a fucking powerful beard. I'd love to know where you get your beard shaped. Because do barbers have that experience with beards? Like how to treat... This guy it was just 
perfect beard and he had a, it was he was muscular and he had a, a like he had a long sleeve white t-shirt on with this his tattoo sleeve shown underneath it and he had a cool hat on i was like this fucking guy is a manly man like that's a real man right there the only thing he was missing was a hatchet which i'm sure he wasn't allowed to bring on the plane but i'm sure that hatchet was used um that was stored under the plane because he couldn't bring that axe on the plane. I know for a fact, but he was a fucking manly man. And it's just amazing that, like, you go to Minnesota and it's guys with, like, the, not fanny packs, but the little merces, they're called. Man purses around, you know, drinking mimosas and tattoos that don't match. Now, I'm, no, that's not lost on me because I know I have shitty tattoos myself, but, um, you know. Oh, funny, by the way, I'll, I'll get to the sex traffic in a bit in a minute. But I was, <laughs> I was on the plane and I'm sitting next to this old woman. And before, and the second I sat down, the second I sat down, she goes, I just want to let you know. I was like, all right, here we go. She goes, last time I was on a plane, I got into an argument with the guy because I started stroking his leg in my sleep. I was like, oh, yeah? She goes, yeah, in my dream, I was stroking my dog, and I started stroking his leg. I was like, listen, sweetheart, if that, I was like, you don't have to make an excuse. So I was like, just reach for it. And she went, sorry? I was like, no, don't worry about it. So... She had on her lap, and I was watching a movie on the phone, and she had uh, she had on her lap her iPad, and her iPad had a jigsaw game, which I thought was genius. I'd never seen it before, and you can select the amount of pieces that the jigsaw's in, and you just drag the jigsaw in, and it's really fucking cool if you like doing jigsaw puzzles at home, and you can pick as many pieces as you want to. So she picked like a, a, like a 500-piece puzzle, and she's dragging the pieces on. So she fell asleep, and her iPad fell on the ground right in between my legs. And I picked up the iPad and she had just done the edges, which as we know is the rule to jigsaws. You always do the edges. You never start in the middle. That's bananas. You always start with the edges and work your way in. So she had dropped the iPad and I, I picked it up for her and I finished the puzzle while she was asleep. I finished the jigsaw and I put it back on her lap. And then she woke up and she was like, what happened? Did you, what? And I was like, yeah, you, you were asleep and you finished it in your sleep. She goes, no, I didn't. He goes, yeah, you were dragging your, you were, she goes, I did this in my sleep. I go, yeah, I was amazed. And she, she said to the steward, because you know the old ladies talk to everybody. So she looked at the steward, she's like, look what I did in my sleep. And the steward's like, yeah, you know, like when you talk to a child when they draw a picture that's like really shitty, but you have to pretend it's good. <laughs> steward's like, oh, did you now? You did this in your sleep. Like this woman is thinking she's some sort of fucking jigsaw savant. Savant, Savant, right out there in the world, just fucking solving puddles in her sleep. But during the day, like when she's wide awake, she can't do it. But only at nighttime, she turns into fucking goodwill hunting. But anyway, back to the sex trafficking story. So I was about to go. Um, so my flight, I had to get. I got up at three forty-five. I was getting picked up at four o'clock in the morning to get to the airport to fly to what I thought was going to be Nashville. Then. Long Island. So they flew to Chicago. But anyway, I told you already. So I get I I I, I go to the front desk, woman at the front desk, go, all right, listen, should I get an Uber or a taxi? Like sometimes taxis just have a set fare, no matter what's going on. Sometimes an Uber, based on the time of day, the morning, how what time they get out of bed, it might be a bit more expensive. Like at three o'clock, three thirty, four o'clock in the morning, Ubers might up the price a bit because it's an inconvenience to get out of bed at that time of night or in the morning. So I go to the front desk, I look at what, and I go, it's a set fee of about $25 to the airport. I go, look, do the take debit card. Anybody who knows McThomas, McThomas never has cash. So they go, let me call them. Call up the taxi service, yellow taxi service is called. He goes, you'll know the yellow taxi will be waiting outside for you. So they call up, do you take debit card? Yes, we do take debit card. All right, no problem. Have it there for me, four o'clock. I'll be at the, I'll, I'll, I'll be at my airport at, 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 my flight is at four. I was boarding at 4.50, 20 minute ride to the airport. Flip-flops on, flip-flops off, scan through, there's me ticket, on you go. I don't fuck around at airports. I don't mess around. Um, I don't be, I'm don't. i not there a second longer than I have to be. So the, the guy goes, all right, no problem. It'll be ready for you, Mr. Thomas. Thank you so much. Go up. My alarm goes off at 3.45, right? And I get up and quickly brush the teeth, wash the face, close right there, get dressed. I'm already packed. Walk out the door. So that takes me 10 minutes. So now I'm downstairs at... Uh, 3.55 and outside there's a black van like a bus like a mini bus 
And the guy goes to me, uh, Mr. T- Mr. Mr. Thomas, Mr. Mick Thomas. I go, yeah, that's me. All right, sir, come on aboard. So I get in. He's an Indian lad. He sounded more Indian than that. I was just too tired to do the impressions. So he goes, climb aboard. I go, yeah, no bother, mate. I get in. You know, I'm on the phone checking checking the phone. And as I'm leaving the, the park, the car park of the hotel, I see a yellow taxi pull in. And I go, wait a minute. What the fuck is going on here? That's weird. Why? Like They did tell me it was a yellow taxi. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck. I just got sex. Tra- I'm going to be kidnapped now. That's it. Look at me. I'm in great shape. Right? Some ro- some Arab guy is going to want me. Some sultan. Some sheik. Some oil baron in the Middle East is going to want He loves a bit of this. Maybe he's a fan of the show. Maybe he's a fan of Cheaper Than Therapy. And I'm being abducted now. Because I refuse to go over. I'm like, fuck. So I put him in GPS, the airport address. And he's not following the GPS. Like, Waze is going the fastest route. I'm like, fuck me. Now we're going through some bad areas. Like, all right, I get it. This is where fucking the whole George Floyd thing. This is what happens at nighttime. Now that you take the wrong turn down here, you're like, all right, now I get, now I get him in a rougher area. Now this understands where the asshole cops would turn up. Um, Not saying cops are assholes. I'm saying that asshole cops would be hunting around these areas. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm like, oh shit, this looks like a high crime area, bars on windows and doors, you know what I'm trying to say? So, I uh, I go I go down to the, uh, now all of a sudden, like I'm starting to panic a little bit, so I'm trying to talk to the lad, suss him out a bit, you know? And then all of a sudden, he gets on, he gets on his, on his phone, and he's texting a lot, like he's got the phone up on the thing, I'm trying to see, and I, then he gets back on track with Waze, and I go, do you know what terminal we're going to? And he was like, well, who are you flying with? I go, well, did they not tell you that in the office? And they're like, no, they just said go to the airport. And I go, all right, Southwest, you know what terminal that is? Because usually fucking cab drivers and Uber drivers who go to airports regularly know exactly what terminal which airline goes out of. And I was like, Southwest, is that one? I go, no, that's two, mate. I was like, all right, two. So he gets on track then all of a sudden. And he goes goes to the airport, and he, as we pull up outside the airport, I go, "All right, man, I have my debit card out." And he goes, "We don't, I don't take debit card." And he goes, "According to your office, you do." We call the front desk, and they, you know, we went down to the front desk, and they said you do, and you're supposed to go back and pick up my friend too to bring him back because he's on like a later flight. And he was like, "I don't take debit card." I go, "Well, listen, you better take that up at the front desk then." He's like, "Well, you can't leave here until you pay me." I go, "Listen." I called the front. I called. Goes, do you want me to call uh, the front desk of the hotel, or do you want me to call? yellow taxi services and he goes it's all right you don't have to pay and i got out and i left so i call up me mate dave dave i said give me a heads up dave this fellow who's on the way back to pick you up he doesn't take debit card something's not right with him turns out that the woman who works on the front desk when we asked her to call we asked the guy to call call it in the taxi service he called it in no problem but the woman listening called up her buddy and she's getting a kickback so she's sending all her fucking taxi service all these taxis and when the taxi yellow taxi pulls up all he does is just wait outside this guy's not showing up all right don't know what to tell you do you know what i mean so this fucking so woman i'm assuming she's fired i hope she is and i don't like getting people fired i don't man i'm never one of those people that complain like if i go into a restaurant i get into an argument with somebody i don't want a person fired i never do I never complain. Can I speak to the manager? Unless the person's literally crossing the line. Because you can argue, you can have a bad day. Man, I've been there. I've dealt with customers. I've been rude to customers based on my day. But you're trying to, what you're doing is pulling a scam, sweetheart. And now you're fired. And that's how it works. And I'm a diamond member at the Hilton. A diamond member. It doesn't get any top of the line more than that. You know what I mean? Right At that level, the way I am, I've turned it down every time. Could have got a blowjob off Paris Hilton. I turn it down every time. Every time. She's not my type. Every time. That's the type of status I have at the Hilton. That's how many times I've stayed there. That's the, that's what a diamond member will get you. And I turned it down. But when you call up as a diamond member and you make a complaint, oh, the, oh, I'm waiting on calls back from corporate now. No need, lads. You don't have to. Don't don't have to. I'm just a normal person. I'm like one of you. One of the little people. Man of the people. Milk 349 now. Don't know. But that's me in a nutshell. Anyway, I survived, lads. Thanks so much. We didn't. You can call off Liam Neeson to come help me from being 
taken ta-da all right lads that's the show thanks for listening liking subscribing and sharing please do that please share please subscribe if you're on youtube you're listening to this hit the fucking subscribe button it's not harder follow me on instagram mick thomas comedy i put a joke up every single day every day i have a new joke up there a a clip uh on tiktok same again tiktok slightly different i do put a bit of stand up on there but i also put different you know stuff on there um Check me out there wherever you get your podcast from. And if you're on YouTube, whatever, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down if you don't like it. And put in a comment here and there. It doesn't help you, but it helps me. Anyway, thanks so much, lads. And as always, check out those dates where I'm going to be around. I said at the start of the show, the top of the show. Lovely talking to you. I'll see you next time. And as always, wash your hands, you dirty fuckers. Good luck to you.